Hello everyone, in the previous lecture we were trying to solve the secretary problem using the dynamic programming equation. If you recall we, we had written out the dynamic programming equation uh, as uh, uh, for, for steps t less than n and t, uh, t equal to n. So, for t equal to n this is what we had written out we, we wrote that j n of 1 remember 1 was the, st was the state in which the present candidate is the best you have seen so far. So, j n of 1 was equal to h of 1 which was a terminal uh, terminal reward and that was equal to 1 you can see here j n of 0 is equal to h of 0 j n of delta was equal to h of delta h of 0 and h of delta were both individually 0. So, j n of 0 equals equal to j n of delta equal to 0 was what we concluded for time step for the last time step that is time step n. For t less than n we had we wrote out that j t of 1 that means the the uh, the reward to go at time 1 was uh, or the value function at time 1 was the maximum of these two of two costs the the stage wise reward plus the expected reward to go from continuing which is what we got from action c and then a similar quantity that we got from action q. When we wrote out these expressions we eventually came to the conclusion that j t of 1 j t of uh, that j t of uh, 1 should be given is uh, is given by a certain expression uh, which is written uh, which is written here. So, j t of 1 is max is the max of t by n comma j t of 0. Similarly, j t of 0 is 1 by t plus 1 j t of 1 plus t by t plus 1 j t j t plus 1 of 1 and j t by t plus 1 j t plus 1 of 0. The, so, j t plus j t of 0 had, a, had an expression that was given by this here and that collapsed eventually that gave us this particular these two uh, uh, these two equations. You can see these two equations along with what hap along with the boundary condition j t of uh, delta equal to 0 for all t that then to gives us together a recursion that we need to solve in order to get the value function at each time. Now, one of the th one of the other things we were able to conclude was that if you are in state 0 that means if the present candidate is not the best you have seen so far then it is optimal to continue ok. That means that is you continue to search because you would get uh, if the present candidate is not the best so far then there is still some chance that you will get a better candidate. So, you can uh, uh, so, you continue to continue to uh, to continue to interview further candidates. So, in which means in state 0 the optimal thing to do is to continue. Now, in state 1 the uh, what the optimal thing to do is is a bit more complicated state in state 1 uh, the if t by n is greater than uh, if t by n is greater than j t of 0 then the optimal action is to stop that means it is to con it is to quit if t by n is less than j t of 0 then the optimal action is to continue if t by n is equal to j t of 0 then either action is optimal. Now, what this suggested was uh, the uh, that an optimal policy has a certain form namely that you observe the first tau candidates and then select the one who is better than all the previous ones. So, up until uh, until you hit time tau you simply keep continuing you keep interviewing candidates one after the other ok. So, you uh, you continue your search for at least a time tau thereafter you wait till you see the candidate who is the best you have seen so far and then in that at that moment you just stop the search and you make an offer to that candidate. This uh, this can be written articulated in, in the form of a policy as follows. So, your policy pi star it comprises of mu 1 star to mu n star where in state 0 at any time t you can see the optimal thing to do is to is to continue for all uh, for uh, for tau t less than less than tau the optimum uh, and also for t greater than tau ok. So, at any whenever you you reach state 0 regardless of what tau is you can you 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 uh, regardless of what t is you just continue. But in state 1 that means if you if the candidate you have seen is the best you have seen so far at that moment 
then in then you continue up until a time uh, uh, so long as t is less than tau. So, so when t is less than tau you are continuing in either state in state 0 or in state 1 whereas for t greater than tau you continue only in state uh, state 0 and you quit in state 1. So, for when when time is greater than uh, tau you wait you look for to wait for the moment where the best candidate you have seen so far arrives the candidate you are seeing is the best you have seen so far and then you just make an offer to him. So, this was not a proof as you can see this is simply a suggestion this, this suggests that this, this could be an optimal policy, but this needs a proof ok. So, what we will do in today's lecture is actually prove that the optimal policy in fact takes this sort of form and moreover what we, we will we will further actually uh, get a uh, an idea of what the op, what the value of tau would be in terms of n right so let us let's now go to the next lecture and try and sort this out All right. So, first thing first thing we need to ask is is is, uh, is the optimal policy really of such a form ok. So, for this uh, let us uh, let us uh, let us let us observe a few things. What we will prove is that if it is optimal to continue in state 1 that means at a certain time tau then it is optimal to continue for all such time all times before tau in uh, it is optimal to continue in state 1 in at all times before tau ok. So, remember the the uh, the optimality of continuing is only in question uh, only in question at uh, when you are in state 0 in state 1 in state 0 we have all uh, so is only in question in state 1 ok. Remember the optimality of continuing up until a time tau is only of in question at state 0 at state 1. In state 0 we have already established that it is optimal it is it is optimal to continue Th that has come about when we when we saw that this the max of these two quantities is um, is always the first term here and that term is uh, that term is greater than equal to 0. So, as a consequence it is uh, when you are in state 0 it is always optimal to uh, it is always optimal to continue. Now, in, in what we will now show is that in state 1 we have this particular structure that we will show that the optimal policy has the property that we will show that the optimal policy has the property that if it is optimal to continue in state 1 at some time tau. write this at some time tau then it is optimal to continue in state 1 at all times t less than tau ok. So, in other words uh, if if you are continuing to search further when you are in state 1 at a time tau then you ought to have been continuing uh, you ought to have continued to search up and at, at earlier times as well in which case you should have been continuing in either state state 0 or state 1 up until that time tau ok. So, this is what we will uh, we will show ok. Now, in order to do this let us let us assume that either j tau of 1 is greater than tau by n or j tau of 1 is equal to j tau 
of 0 is equal to tau by n. Okay. Now, remember in this case, okay, if a because looking at this equation here j j when looking uh, putting t equal to tau here j t j tau of 1 equal to tau by n which would mean that tau by n is either great is greater than or equal to j tau of uh, j, j tau of 0 which what that effectively means is that when either of these two cases hold either j tau of 1 is greater than tau by n or j tau of 1 is equal to tau by n and as a consequence j tau of 0 is also equal to tau by n. In that case, it is optimal uh, in, in, in each of these cases, in each of these cases, it is optimal, it is optimal to continue. Okay. So, the action C is optimal. So, this is what we are assuming. So, which we are assuming that these either of these two hold in which case it is optimal to continue. Now, if either of these, these two hold then let us go back to the expression we have for j, j, j t of 0. So, now let us write out this for t equal to tau minus 1. So, if I write this for t equal to tau minus 1. I get j tau minus 1 of, of 0 equals 1 by tau j tau of 1 plus tau minus 1 by tau j tau of 0. Now, remember we have assumed here that uh, 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 that j tau of 1 is, is either greater than tau by n or equal to tau by n and now if, if this if in if j tau of j tau of 1 is okay now let's analyze this this expression here the, the right hand side of this particular expression and recall that what we have assumed is that j tau of 1 is greater than either greater than tau by n or j tau of 1 is equal to j tau of 0 is equal to tau by n now if this is if j tau of 1 is greater than tau by n then let's go back to this it means that j tau of 1 is greater than tau by n which means j tau of 1 is actually is since that is strictly greater than tau by n it means that it cannot since it is since j tau 1 is the maximum of these two quantities it has to be equal to the second quantity here which is j tau of 0 all right. So, under uh, in either either in this case or in this case we conclude that in both cases we have from these this here implies that j tau of 1 is equal to j tau of 0. Now, in this case we have therefore, we can write that j uh, j tau minus 1 of 0 is equal to j tau of 0 equals j tau of 1 but j tau of 1 we as we had uh, we had assumed that this 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 is equal uh, this we had assumed that this is either greater than tau by n or equal to tau by n so in other words this is greater than equal to tau by n but then that is strictly greater than tau minus 1 by n so consequently we have concluded that you putting these last two terms together we have concluded is therefore that j tau minus 1 of 0 is greater than uh, greater than tau minus 1 by n and actually I will not need the stronger version and uh, let me just simply write greater than equal to tau by n that is enough all right. So, so j tau minus 1 of 0 is greater than equal to tau by n now greater than equal to tau by n all right. So, now let us uh, let us write out j tau minus 1 of 1. So, j tau minus 1 of 1 is 
the max of tau minus 1 by n comma j tau minus 1 of 0. Now, j tau is since it is the max of these two terms remember j tau minus 1 is greater than equal, greater than equal to tau by n okay? and the other term here is tau minus 1 by n. So, comparing these two we are always going to get that this this second term here this term here is the larger one. So, consequently we have that this is greater than equal to tau by n which is greater than tau minus 1 by n. Now, as a consequence of this we have concluded that j tau minus 1 is also greater than tau minus 1 by n. j tau minus 1 of 1 is greater than tau minus 1 by n. Now, what is this what is this basically telling us that it tells us that if if we have that e, if either this or this holds at tau then it also holds at tau minus 1 then it also holds at for tau minus 1 which means that the assumption j tau minus 1 is greater than tau holds this quant this holds which means that uh, we, we can now apply this logic once again for tau, uh, for tau minus 2 and then again for tau minus 3 and so on in in each of these cases we we get that it is optimal to continue Thus, if it is optimal to continue at tau in state at time tau, write this explicitly in at time tau in state state 1 then it is optimal to continue at all t less than tau. So, in other words the optimal policy what uh, cannot have the form where you continue for some time uh, 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 you, you uh, continue for some time quit and then again continue for some other some more time. The optimal policy would be that if you are continuing for a certain amount of time at, at a certain time at uh, in state 1 and then you ought to have been continuing up until that time as well right. So, that is what we have concluded so far. Okay. Now, let us uh, let us uh, uh, let us take this uh, further and let us con let us see what what else we can say. Okay. So, so I let me write out first the what the policy what the form of the policy is that is the thus the optimal policy has the form mu star tau of 1 equals continue implies mu star t of 1 equals continue for all t less than tau and mu star t of 0 is is continue and this is true for all t. So, when you are in state 0 you continue and when you are in state 1 uh, you continue up until a uh, up until a time uh, a time a time tau. Okay. So, uh, as a consequence of this we also we find a few other things about about the value function this this can be this can uh, be easily calculated. We find that j t of 1 is uh, here it should be t mu t of 1 equals yeah, 
j we find that j t of 1 equals j t of 0 and this is true for all t less than equal to tau and, uh, 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 and in fact we, uh, we in fact have that at as a result of this we have that that j t of j uh, we have that j 1 of 0 is equal to j 1 of 1 is equal to all the way up until j, z, j tau of 0 is which is also itself equal to j tau of 1. This so in, uh, in other words so the value function is actually the same the value function is the same in each state and at each time up until time tau. Now what happens after time tau? Well after time tau after time tau it is it becomes optimal to stop when you are in state 1. So j tau of 1 becomes equal uh, j uh, in, in fact at for any future times t it becomes j t of 1 becomes equal to t by n for all t greater than tau. Now uh, I can uh, we can actually subs we can in fact also find what uh, what j t of 0 would be j t of 0 is therefore equal to 1 by t plus 1 j t plus 1 by n plus t by t plus 1 j t plus 1 j t plus 1 of 0. Right. So, in other words this can this can further be simplified and you can write it as 1 by n plus t by t plus 1 j t plus 1 of 0. This is the recursion for j t of 0. So, now I can in fact work this out even further I can I, I uh, you can you can substitute this uh, substitute this back backwards remember we have uh, we have that j n of 0 is equal to 0. So, substituting this uh, substituting this backwards gives us that j t of 0 can is written given by this expression it is t by n 1 by t plus 1 by t plus 1 plus dot 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 till 1 by n minus 1. This is j t of this is j t of 0. Okay. Now, what would be uh, uh, what would be uh, the, the value of tau then? Well, the value of tau remember is one where uh, is value of tau is the largest would be would be the, the largest value up until when we have this this equality okay so it would be the largest it would be the largest value it would be the largest value for which uh, it would be the largest value for which jt of 1 and jt of 0 would end up coinciding so in other words the uh, the tau therefore would be tau would therefore be the maximum value of t for which j t of 0 would be the uh, it would be the largest value of t for which this uh, j t of so as I said tau would be the largest value for which j t of j tau of 0 uh, for which j t of 0 and j t of 1 would end up coinciding. So, the largest value of t for which j t of 1 and j t of 0 are equal is, is, is our value of tau. Now, for that for those to be equal if you just go back to our, our calculation for these two to be equal it is necessary therefore, that j t of 0 is greater than t by n. So, in other words tau therefore is the largest largest value of t for which j t of 0 is greater than is greater than t by n. 
Now we have just we just calculated an expression here for j t of 0. I can put that in here and conclude that tau is actually the max value of t such that 1 by t plus 1 by t plus 1 all the way till 1 by n minus 1 is greater than 1. Now when is this, uh, how can we estimate this particular expression? Remember this expression is a function of n it because the, the, uh, this goes on up until n minus 1. So I can, I can approximate this expression as, as, as follows, it is like as if it is an integral from tau which is going to be a function of n till n of, of 1 by x dx. This is almost equal to that integral. Okay, it is an approximation to that. So, that, that approximation that equ approximation e equals logarithm of n by tau of n and remember we want this quantity to be greater than 1. So, we ask what is the value of tau for which this for which this becomes almost equal to 1. Well, we find that the value of tau then is uh, tau is actually 1 by e times n uh, and this approximation becomes uh, better and better as n tends to infinity. In other words, as n becomes large that means as the number of candidates becomes large, the optimal thing to do for us is to is, is, uh, is to keep continuing until you have seen a fraction 1 by e of them. 1 by e is, is roughly this is this is roughly equal to 1 by 1 by 2.7 or maybe uh, you can say uh, we, 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 we keep continuing up until we have seen uh, up until we have seen the, fir uh, the first one third candidate and after that we, uh, we, we make an offer to the best that we have seen so far. So, what we saw was that this expression here is can be approximated by this integral uh, integral from tau of n till n of 1 by x dx that in turn is uh, equal to log of n by tau of n and we ask that this one, this, uh, this logarithm should be approximately equal to 1. That, that gives us that tau, uh, tau of n should be 1 by e times n and that's, that, that number is approximately 36.8 percent. Uh, so, 1 by 2.718 is roughly 36.8. So, what this tells us is that the optimal thing for us to do for a decision maker to do in the in this kind of stochastic control problem is to observe the first 36.8 percent candidates. So, this holds when when the number of candidates is large. So, as, as the number of candidates becomes very large you observe the first 36 point, the optimal thing to do is to observe the first 36.8 percent candidates and then make an offer to the best you have seen so far. Okay, the best one that, that you have come across at that uh, up until that time. So, which means that if you recall I had mentioned at the start uh, of the, op the st uh, optimal stopping problem that there is, an, there is an element of exploration involved in, in deciding what the, optimal uh, what the optimal action is and, and at the same time one has to also be timely in the optimal stopping problem. This is exactly what is being seen here you make the offer when you get the when you see the best you have seen so far but that doesn't mean you hurry you make you you need to explore for for about a, the first 36% uh, of uh, of of the queue okay so this concludes our analysis of the optimal stopping problem uh, applied to the secretary problem notice that here also what all we have received all that we have been able to get is an is an approximate answer we do not actually have the exact form of the optimal policy and the reason for that is the you know the problem is 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 complicated and we have not we have, it's harder to solve in closed form of course one can try to attempt to solve uh, solve this uh, solve this numerically in uh, uh, in in some or the other way but we can get some insight uh, by doing this particular approximation. In the next lecture what we will do is we will look at a particular another stochastic control problem which in which remarkably we are actually able to solve the problem in closed form. That means we are able to get the form of the policy uh, in closed form and that is uh, and that that problem uh, is, is something that is very widely applied in all of uh, you know in all of engineering. 
So that is coming up next in the in the next lecture.